Hello everyone and welcome to the Unanswered Questions True Crime Podcast. I have spent hours and hours investigating this. He basically told her that people have been killed. Journalists, independent investigators, people like that disappeared. It frightened her to the bone. There's more to the story than meets the eye. There were rumors of torture and homicide and sexual abuse, all sorts of egregious, horrendous crimes. He was polygraphed three times. Each of those three showed evasions. His resumes were a skeleton of truth. He was mad at the world, and particularly mad at the government. The study that he commissioned that described a fictional terrorist attack. If people have died over this, it means you're getting close to the truth. You don't have to be a conspiracy theorist to say, what the fuck? Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of my new podcast, Unanswered Questions, where every week we will endeavour to discuss a mysterious unsolved case that has many lingering unanswered questions. So I hope you enjoy and as always leave me some feedback on what you think about the show and rate it as well. Now on to the show. This week we'll be talking about the disappearance of the Amber Room. Now, the Amber Room was a chamber decorated in amber panels backed with gold leaf and mirrors. Located in the Catherine Palace of, and I'm going to butcher this name, Tzarkoe Selo near St. Petersburg, Russia. Constructed in the 18th century in Russia, the room was dismantled and eventually disappeared during World War II. Before its loss, it was considered an eighth wonder of the world. A reconstruction was made starting in 1979 and completed and installed in the Catherine Palace in 2003. The Amber Room was intended in 1701 for the Charlottenburg Palace in Berlin, Prussia, but was eventually installed in the Berlin City Palace. It was designed by German Baruch sculptor Andreas Scholter and Danish amber craftsman Gottfried. Fried Wolfram, I'm sorry if I get any of these names wrong, Scholter and Wolfram worked on the room until 1707 when work was continued by Amber Masters Gottfried Turau and Ernest Schatt from Danzig, Gdansk. I'm sorry if I get any of those names wrong or mispronounce any of that. It remained in Berlin until 1716 when it was given by the Prussian King Frederick Wilhelm I to his ally Tsar Peter the Great of the Russian Empire. In Russia, the room was installed in the Catherine Palace. After expansion and several renovations, it covered more than 55 square metres, 590 square foot, and contained over 6 tonnes, 13,000 pounds of amber. The Amber Room was looted during World War II by the Army Group North of Nazi Germany and taken to Queensburg for reconstruction and display. Sometime in early 1944, with Allied forces closing in on Germany, the room was dismantled and crafted for storage in the castle basement. Connersburg was destroyed by Allied bombers in August of 1944, and documentation of the room location ends there. Its eventual faint and current whereabouts, if it survives today, remain a mystery. In 1979, the decision was taken to create a reconstructed amber room at the Catherine Palace in Pushkin. After decades of work by Russian craftsmen and donations from Germany, it was completed and inaugurated in 2003. Now we get into the architecture and history. The Amber Room is a priceless piece of art with extraordinary architectural features such as gilding, carvings, 450 kgs or 990 pounds of amber, pa- amber panels, gold leaf, gemstones and mirrors, all highlighted with candlelight. Additional architectural and design features included statues of angels and children. Because of its unique features and singular beauty, the original Amber Room was sometimes dubbed the eighth wonder of the world. Modern estimates of the room's value range from $142 million in 2007 to over $500 million in 2016. Now we get into the history of this room. The Amber Room was begun in 1701 with the purpose of being installed at Charlottenburg Palace, the residence of Frederick I, King of Prussia, at the urging of his second wife, Sophia Charlotte. The concept and design of the room was drafted by Andreas Scholter. It was fabricated by Gottfried Wolfram, master craftsman to the Danish court of King Frederick XII of Denmark, with help from the Amber Masters Ernst Schatt and Gottfried Teru from Danzig, now Gdansk in Poland. I'm sorry if I get any of those names wrong. Although originally intended for installation at Charlottenburg Palace, the complete panels were eventually installed at Berlin City Palace. The Amber Room did not, however, remain at Berlin City Palace for long. Peter the Great of Russia admired it during a visit, and in 1716, King Frederick I's son, Frederick Wilhelm I, presented the room to Peter as a gift which forged a Russo-Prussian alliance against Sweden. The original Berlin design of the Amber Room was reworked in Russia in a joint effort by German and Russian craftsmen. It was 
Peter's daughter, Empress Elizabeth, who decided the amber treasure should be installed at Catherine Palace, where the Russian imperial family typically spent their summers. After several other 18th century renovations, the room covered more than 55 square metres, 590 square feet, and contained over 6 tonnes, 13,000 pounds of amber. The room took over 10 years to construct. Now we get into the theft of, of the amber room during World War II. Shortly after the beginning of the German invasion of the Soviet Union in World War II, the curators responsible for removing the art treasures in Leningrad tried to disassemble and remove the amber room. However, over the years, the amber had dried out and become brittle, making it impossible to move the room without the amber crumbling. The amber room was therefore hidden behind mundane wallpaper in an attempt to keep German forces from seizing it, but the attempt to hide such a well-known piece of art failed. German soldiers of Army Group North disassembled the Amber Room within 36 hours under the supervision of two experts. On the 14th of October 1941, the priceless room reached Konzingberg in East Prussia for storage and display in the town's castle. On the 13th of November 1941, a Konzingberg newspaper announced an exhibition of the Amber Room at Konzingberg Castle. Now we get into the last days of the Amber Room being in Konensburg. Orders given by Hitler on the 21st and 24th of January 1945 ordered the movement of looted possessions from Konensburg. This allowed Albert Speer, Reichsmaster of Armaments, and his administrative team to transport cultural goods of priority. However, before the Amber Room could be moved, Eric Koch, who was in charge of civil administration in Konensburg during the final months of the war, abandoned his post and fled from the city, leaving General Otto Latch in command. In August 1945, Connersburg was heavily firebombed by the Royal Air Force. It suffered further extensive damage from artillery from the advancing Red Army before the final occupation on the 9th of April 1945. Now we get into the disappearance of the Amber Room. After the war, the Amber Room was never seen in public again, though reports have occasionally surfaced stating that pieces of the Amber Room survived the war. Several eyewitnesses claim to have spotted the famous room being loaded on board the Wilhelm Gustloff, which left Gdynia on the 13th of January 1945 and was then promptly torpedoed and sunk by a Soviet submarine. In 1997, an Italian stone mosaic, Feel and Touch, that was part of a set of four stones which had decorated the Amber Room, was found in Germany in the possession of, a, of the family of a soldier who claimed to have helped pack up the amber chamber. The mosaic came into the hands of the Russian authorities and was used in the reconstruction. In 1988, two separate teams, one German and one Lithuanian, announced they had located the amber room. The German team pointed to a silver mine while the Lithuanian team believed the amber treasure was buried in a lagoon. Neither of the two locations turned out to hold the amber room. In 2004, a lengthy investigation by British investigative journalists Catherine Scott Clark and Adrian Levy concluded that the Amber Room was most likely destroyed when Conensburg Castle was damaged during the bombing of Conensburg by the Royal Air Force in 1944 and then by the Soviets burning of the castle followed by shelling of the remaining walls. Official assessments set out in documents from the Russian National Archives written by Alexander Brusov, head of the Soviet team charged with locating the Amber Room following the war, agreed with this theory. The official report stated, quote, summarizing all the facts, we can say that the Amber Room was destroyed between 9th and the 11th of April, 1945, end quote. These dates correspond with the end of the Battle of Konensburg, which finished on 9th of April with the surrender of the German garrison. A few years later, Brusov publicly voiced a contrary opinion. This is believed to have been due to pressure from Soviet authorities, who did not want to be seen as responsible for the loss of the Amber Room. Among other information retrieved from the archives was the revelation that the remaining Italian stone mosaics were found in the burned derbs of the castle. Scott Clark and Livy concluded in their report that the reason the Soviets conducted extensive searches for the Amber Room, even though their own experts had concluded that it was destroyed, was because they wanted to know if any of their own soldiers had been responsible for the destruction. Scott Clark and Livy also assessed the others in the Soviet government found the theft of the Amber Room a useful Cold War propaganda tool. Russian government officials have since denied these conclusions. Alidia Lonker, a senior researcher at the Pavlovsk Palace, reportedly stated, It is impossible to see the Red Army being so careless that they let the Amber Room be destroyed. End quote. I'm sorry if I get any of those names wrong. After the report was made public, Leonoid Arinistin, I'm so sorry if I get that name wrong, who was a lieutenant in the Red Army in charge of a rifle platoon during the Battle of Konensburg, said, quote, I, was pro- I probably was one of the last people who saw the Amber Room. End quote. At the same time, he explained that the whole city was burning due to artillery bombardments, but also denied allegations that the Red Army burned the city on purpose, saying, quote, What soldiers would burn the city where they will have to stay? End quote. 
A variation of this theory by some present-day residents of Kalingrad, formerly Connorsburg, is that at least parts of the room were found in the Connorsburg Castle cellars after World War II by the Red Army. The Amber Room was allegedly still in good condition. This was not admitted at the time, so the blame could fall upon the Nazis. To preserve this story, access to the ruins of the castle, which was allowed after World War II, was suddenly restricted to all, including historical and archaeological surveys, but the room is said to be in a storehouse near Connorsburg Castle. Then, in 1968, despite academic protests worldwide, Soviet General Secretary Leonid Brezhnev, sorry if I get that name wrong, ordered the destruction of Konigsberg Castle, thus making any on-site research of the last known resting place of the Amber Room all but impossible. Later, the search for the Amber Room continued in different locations, including near Wappentrol, Germany. Another hypothesis involves a bunker in Mamaraki in northeastern Poland, or that Stalin ordered the Amber Room replaced with a replica prior to its looting, hiding the original. The main problem with finding the Amber Room is that the Nazi regime hid many items in many difficult-to-reach places, usually without documentation, leaving a wide search area. The Germans also moved items to destinations far from Europe in some cases. The search for the Amber Room has also been halted by authorities. In the case of Fridland Castle, it was halted because of historic value of the castle. In October 2020, Polish divers from the Balotek Group found the wreck of the USS Kalschern, a ship which took part in Operation Hannibal, a sea evacuation which allowed more than a million German troops and civilians from East Prussia to escape advancing Soviet forces. The ship was attacked off the coast of Poland by Soviet aircraft after it sailed from Konigsberg in 1945. The wreck holds many crates with unknown contents. An online news website, Live Science, reports that this German steamship may hold crates that contain parts of the Amber Room. Now we get into the reconstruction of the room. In 1979, the Soviet government decided to construct a replica of the Amber Room at, and I'm going to butcher this name, Tzakoi Selo, a process that was to take 24 years and require 40 Russian and German experts in amber craftsmanship. Using original drawings and old black and white photographs, every attempt was made to duplicate the original Amber Room. This included the 350 shades of amber in the original panels and fixtures that adorned the room. A major problem was the lack of skilled workers since amber carving was a nearly lost art form. The financial difficulties that plagued the reconstruction project from the start were solved with the donation of US $3.5 million from the German company EON. By 2003, the work of the Russian craftsman was mostly completed. The new room was dedicated by Russian President Vladimir Putin and German Chancellor Gerald Schroeder at the 300th anniversary of the city of St. Petersburg. And I'm going to butcher this name. In Klimmarkschnau, near Berlin, there is a miniature amber room fabricated after the original. The Berlin miniature collector, Eula Klimbelli, sorry, if I get that name wrong, had his copy made of original East Prussian amber. To this day, the original amber room has never been found, and its location remains unknown. With that, this case remains open, but with many unanswered questions, it still remain unanswered. Please rate the show and let me know what you guys think about this and the many other cases I've covered. You can follow me on all major social media platforms, YouTube, BitChute, Dailymotion. I'm also on Twitter and Instagram, links are all down below in the description. If you have a case you'd like me to have a look at or cover, don't hesitate to send me a message. I'm your host, and this has been the Unanswered Questions Podcast. Until next time. Next, on Unanswered Questions. Bashel resigned as Minister-President shortly after he became embroiled in a scandal known as Water Cunt Gate for alleged spying on his Social Democrat rival during the 1987 state election. On the 11th of October 1987, nine days after his resignation, Bashel was found dead under mysterious circumstances at the, and I'm going to butcher this name, Hotel Biu Rivage in Geneva, Switzerland. 